girls. We're gonna read Restart. Chapter 13, Shoshana Weber. I get it, we're nerds. The video club, I mean. We own it too. Take something meant as an insult and be proud of it. Nerd power. After all, the shoe totally fits. We wouldn't be as happy doing whatever it is the so-called cool people do. That's how I always look at it. We are who we are and we're good with it. I figured the others felt the same way. Who cares what the popular kids think of us? Was I ever wrong about that? As soon as someone from the A-list showed even the slightest interest in the video club, we all went weak in the knees and lined up to love him. My friends used to act like attention from the cool kids meant nothing to them because they never thought they'd get any. Get any. But now that they've had a little taste, they're hooked. Brendan, who was bullied by Chase almost as much as Joel was, has turned into Chase's biggest fan. And none of those sheep can stop raving about Chase's amazing suggestion for the National Video Journalism Contest entry. I could think of a lot of words to describe Chase. And amazing isn't one of them. Except may maybe that it's amazing he isn't in jail. On the other hand, well, that contest is important to me. And it's not like I've got a better idea. I did a little research. And the Medal of Honor turns out to, just, to be just as special as Chase says it is. Even a broken clock gives the correct time twice a day. I figured I'd go talk to Mr. Solway. If he really did win a Medal of Honor, I owe it to myself to check him out. On the walk over to Portland Street, my phone pings. A message from Joel. JW Piano Man, where are you? Shosh 466, in town. JW Piano Man, hot date? Yeah, right, with a guy who must be at least 80, I thumb back. Shosh 466, video club business. JW Piano Man, question mark, question mark, question mark. Shosh 466, meeting, possible subject for the contest video, Korean war hero. JW Piano Man, whoa, where'd you find him? I hesitate. I never told Joel that while he's suffering at Melton, Chase has moved in and taken over his spot in the video club. It would only make a miserable situation worse, and I'm definitely not going to admit that Chase put me on to Mr. Solway. I don't like keeping secrets from my brother, but there are some things you just can't say. Maybe in a few months, if Joel starts fitting in at boarding school and making some friends there, or at least not hating it, I can break the news to him and he won't care so much. So I message back, Shosh 466, a friend of a friend. I put away my phone praying that he doesn't ask for more information. Joel is a cross between a prosecuting attorney and a bloodhound if he gets the idea that you're holding on to him, especially now when he's lonely and bored with nothing better to do than think about home. At Portland Street, I ask at the desk and they direct me to room 121. As I make my way through the halls, I get a sense of just how elderly some of the residents must be. My grandfather is 73 and he still rollerblades every morning. These people are way older than him. A lot of them must be in their 90s and maybe even over 100. The door of 121 is ajar, so when I knock on it, it swings open. Mr. Solway, I tentatively say. A gruff voice announces, we don't want any. I'm, uh, I'm not selling anything. I step further into the room and get my first view of him. I can't see him directly since he's facing away from me, watching a news channel on TV. He's short but sturdy with thick white hair. I just want to talk to you. I'm in the video club at my school and... You call yourself a governor, he bellows suddenly at the TV. You couldn't run a hot dog cart. You're an idiot. I keep talking. I do that when I'm nervous. And there's this national contest where you have to interview a senior citizen who's had an interesting life. He turns in his chair and fixes me with his blurring gaze. Do I know you? I'm still babbling, and I heard you were awarded the Medal of Honor in the Korean War. He reddens. Is that what this is about? The medal doesn't make me any more special than any other people who were there. Go interview one of them and leave me out of it. I'm trying to be reasonable. Don't you want your story to be told? No, it's my story. It's enough for me to know. 
By now I've caught sight of the picture of President Truman hanging the Medal of Honor around a younger Mr. Solway's neck, and I'm convinced that he has to be my subject. A lot of kids my age don't understand the sacrifices people like you made for our country. Don't flatter me, kid. I'm 88, excuse me, I'm 86 years old and there's precious little left of me to flatter. I don't want to be interviewed. I don't want to be thanked. All I want is for my dining room to stop serving cream spinach. I'm completely defended. The guy is impossible. Absolutely determined to stew in his own misery. He almost reminds me of Joel, who is so ticked off at where he ended up that he can't allow himself to try to make the best of it. Because then he'd have nothing to complain about and complaining is the only thing that keeps him going. The difference is that Joel has every right to be angry at the curveball life pitched him. This old creep is just plain mean. I'm about to back out of the door to defeat what when a familiar voice announces, good news, Mr. Solway, I snagged the last pure prune Danish. There he is the alpha rat of my family's nightmares, bearing a pastry on a paper plate. He got a name tag on, proclaiming he's to be Chase Volunteer. The change in Mr. Solway is incredible. His crabby glower morphs into a grin that lights up the room. Come to think of it, it makes perfect sense. Who could cheer up a miserable jerk who would never give anybody else the skin off a grape? Only another miserable jerk, someone even nastier and more selfish. The two of them were made for each other. Then Chase notices me. Oh, hi, Shoshana. His smile disappears when I glare at him. Wait a minute, Mr. Solway explains. Is she your friend, Chase? He nods. We're in video club together. I'm the one who suggested you for her project. The old soldier thinks it's over and comes to a conclusion with a curt nod. That makes it different. I'd be happy to help the two of you out. I don't like the sound of that. I don't have a partner for this contest. And even if I did, the last person on earth I'd ever choose would be Chase Ambrose. But if I say that to Mr. Solway, I'll get kicked out again, this time for good. I turn furious eyes on Chase. He gazes in innocently back and I know that somewhere deep inside, he's laughing at me. It looks like I have a partner, whether I want one or not. And I don't. How am I? ever going to explain this to Joel.